we've invested in this plan of the governor's, $92 million in road and bridge dollars flow back to the region, including $40 million in targeted road and bridge projects for regions outside of Greater Boston. We increased by 66% regional transit authority funding and make changes that will put them on a forward funding basis to stabilize their funding structure. Regional transit authorities are what people around the state rely on, average people. People like, like we all are today, rely on to get to school, to commute to work, and to get to a doctor's appointment. And so we think that they deserve an expanded and improved public transportation service. So we have $75 million in our plan for regional rail projects to connect every region of the state to Greater Boston, like improvements to the Haverhill Road, and to get more reliability and on time service. And finally, this bill establishes a grant program to help revitalize economic development in gateway cities, like Lowell, like Haverhill, like Lawrence, like the We have a duty to future generations, in our view, to, to build a stronger transportation system that can fuel economic growth in every corner of the country. Our motorists spend $718 million each year on car repairs because of the sorry condition of our railways. Regions outside of Boston rely on safe roads and bridges the commuter rail, they deserve no less. The 19 cent gas tax, coupled with lasting and widespread reform, is the most equitable solution to end a long cycle of neglect and inaction. And to make our roads and bridges and public transportation network a key part of our economic security and our future and our growth. We think it's a fair solution for this region and fair for the state as a whole. I know that our neighbors to the north, I don't know if I'm pointing north. Uh, in New Hampshire have recently begun their own move to raise the gas tax by 15 cents. The governor proposes to invest an additional 19 cents to boost economic growth across the state and pay off billions in debt. I look forward to working in collaboration with each of you to build a stronger and more modern transportation system that can fuel economic growth throughout the state. I believe the times are difficult and they require our leadership I think the people demand our leadership, and together we can provide leadership that they deserve. Thank you for hearing me out, and I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Secretary, and I know uh, that there are a number of members who might have some questions, right? I know Chairman Wagner does. Uh, just, a, just a comment and a statement, and again, uh, I want to thank you, uh, and especially the governor, for his leadership. And I, as I committed to you early on uh, in this process, that we need to work together in order to come up with a solution uh, that makes sense as we go forward. Uh, but where I differ, uh, and respectfully so, uh, is the fact that I believe that 19 cents is too high. And it's too high in part because of the fact that the climate that we're in today, uh, in the midst of a recession, uh, the folks that I, hate, I hear from, whether it's here in Methuen or Salisbury or anywhere in between, uh, the 19 cents just seems too much for people to understand and to bear uh, when times are tough. And times are clearly tough. And this might not be the time where we can solve all of our transportation problems. Uh, with sort of one big increase uh, in the gas tax. It took us a long time uh, to get in the mess that we're in today, and we're not going to be able to get out of that mess overnight. So uh, we're committed to working uh, with you. Again, I will recommit uh, that we must fix the system first. I'm happy to hear, and I know you've said this in, in the past, that we must reform the system first. People uh, in, in this part of the state and all across the Commonwealth, as we're hearing from uh, demand that we reform the system first. They do not want to see us throwing good money into a broken system. Uh, and as I have said in the past, we can't reform, restructure, uh, or tax our way out of this problem. We need to do a combination of each, but that combination needs to be uh, sort of reason. Uh, as in, in the case of New Hampshire, uh, New Hampshire did 15 cents over three years. Uh, so they looked at it from a long-term approach. Uh, and as I've said in the past, and I think it's tired of me hearing, or hearing me say this, is that I think once we take our foot off of that reform pedal, uh, there are those in Boston who will take the money and run. Uh, so we're committed to reforming the system first uh, and then dealing with uh, the revenue piece. But there are serious savings to be had uh, in the system. There's money coming down uh, to the stimulus bill. Uh, we've had a number of bond bills, accelerated bridge program, uh, and others where there is money coming into the system. We just make, need to make sure uh, that we prove to the citizens uh, across the Commonwealth that we actually can reform the system first. So with that, we'll turn it over to Chairman Wagner, and then we can open up to any members uh, with any questions they've had. We've also been joined 
uh, by Senator Sue Tucker from Andover. Senator, thank you uh, for joining us as well. And, and Representative uh, Don Hummison from Westfield. Exiting stage left, returning <laughs> stage left, or to your right in the audience. Mr. Secretary, thank you. And I was beginning to wonder, uh, I didn't uh, dispute the reliability of, of uh, you know, commuter rail, your preferred way of today, but when you walked in a couple, a couple of minutes late, you know, we were going to send somebody down to the station to check. It wasn't, the, you know what, Mr. Chairman, it was not, commuter rail was on time. I was so taken by the beauty of Methuen that it took us a while to get here. It's my fault entirely. <laughs> I'm going to let that go and get right to the <laughs> Not that I doubt uh, your, your sentiment about the beauty of Methuen, but uh, rather as it uh, being the reason for your being late, I'll just let that go. I do have a question, though, and I wonder if you could provide for this committee either today, uh, or, or preferably today, but also as a follow-up uh, and in writing. The, uh, some analysis relative to or with regard to the number of employees paid for uh, with capital funds versus on the operating budget, clearly no business uh, uh, operates in such a manner. We all know legislatively that that is problematic. I agree with you that it would be uh, a real reform and we would uh, move employees back to the operating budget where they belong. But I wonder if you could give me an analysis by the numbers as to uh, how much the state incurs in capital costs each year in support of uh, the compensation package for employees that are not paid for in the operating budget. What's the number, and what is the cost of our doing that over the period of borrowing? Is it for 20 years, and at what cost? So if we were to pay today versus uh, borrowing today and paying that over 20 years and doing that as an annual practice, uh, that, that, that one may be a no-brainer at day's end. If, uh, but we'd like to see those numbers. Sure. That's one of two questions I have. And we, we will get them to you. And my understanding is it's in the several hundreds of millions of dollars. I mean, it's a big number when you look at the bonding and what you pay over time. So we'll be very specific with you. Our proposal for two cents on gas tax, I believe, gets you moving to less than 50% of those employees. So it's, a, it's not a 100% solution. It's a beginning. Can, can you get that to us by midday tomorrow? I can certainly do Perhaps uh, 2 p.m.? Absolutely. Okay, thank you. And then I have a question on the uh, issue of regional equity, and it is something that the administration has uh, touted in support of their increase, and uh, like Senator Bedour, I think, uh, although there's a, a wide variance of opinion uh, with regard to this issue, I think that 19 cents is a, a tough sell. I suspect the votes are not there uh, in the legislature to do an increase of, of 19 cents. Uh, in order to do uh, reforms, and in order to do the, the component parts of reform that would require uh, new revenues, then I think we're going to have to come up with other ways to skin that cat, if in fact the votes are not there. I mean, that's the, that's the pragmatic reality, that's the political reality, and uh, if the votes are there, that's one thing. If the votes are not there, uh, that's another, and, and I would hope that uh, that we wouldn't have lines drawn in the sand around that issue if a determination is made. And uh, we, we can all, no matter what our position on the issue, begin to go around and count heads. But I think we have an obligation on behalf of all the people that we serve across the Commonwealth to, to come up with a, a fix that is going to work, notwithstanding uh, some of the challenges that, that go hand in hand with, with, uh, you know, with that. So, but what I'd like to ask is about the regional equity because I'm not entirely clear in, in terms of how I would explain that to, to my constituents and to others. So could you just walk us through sure. that so that uh, we have on a percentage basis and, and uh, a numerical basis how those numbers break out and what it means uh, for each region and I guess in particular what it means for this region. 